Hi. Today we are going to talk about the cyber security cube. Um, so in that we are going to talk about the uh, cyber security professionals. Uh, you know how they are going to uh, look into this cyber security cube. So the cyber security professionals are best described as experts charged with the protection of cyberspace. So John Macumber is one of the early cyber security experts developing a commonly used framework called the um, uh, Macumber cube or the cyber security cube. So that we, we, we say this as a Macumber cube or cyber security cube. So the first dimension of your cyber security cube is uh, uh, that includes the three principles of information security. The principles of information security that is uh, the uh, confidentiality, integrity and the availability. Then the cyber security professionals refers to the three principles as CIA refers as confidentiality, integrity, and a triad. The second dimension identifies the three states of information or data. So this is the three states of information or data uh, is there. So the third dimension of the cube, uh, you know, that identifies the three states of the data and third dimension that identifies the uh, uh, the uh, expertise required to provide protection. So these are often called the three categories of cyber security safeguards. So these are, you know, are the countermeasures and we call the cyber security uh, uh, safeguards. So the chapter also discusses the ISO, uh, uh, I mean the the ISO cyber security model. The model represent an international framework to standardize the management of information systems. So let us see this in details, the three dimensions of the cybersecurity cube. The first one is, what is the, the first dimension of your cybersecurity cube is principle of cybersecurity. The first dimension is principle of cyber security dimension. So which consists of your confidentiality, integrity and availability. We call this as your CIA triad, right? So the first dimension of the cyber security cube identifies the goals to protect cyberspace. The goal identified in the first dimension are the fundamental principle. So these three principles are your confidentiality, integrity, and the availability. <clears throat> so the principle provide focus and enable the cybersecurity expert to prioritize actions when protecting any network systems, any network systems. So confidentiality, the first one, the confidentiality prevents the disclosure of information to unauthorized people resources or processes and second one is the integrity so the integrity uh, refers to the accuracy consistency and trustworthiness of data finally the availability ensures that information is accessible by authorized users when needed so use the acronym CIA, use this acronym CIA to remember these three principles. The next one is, as we say, the states of data. The states of data, the another dimension of your uh, cyber security cube. So this cyberspace is a domain containing a considerable amount of uh, sorry, critical important data. Therefore, cybersecurity experts focus on protecting data. 
the second dimension of cyber security cube focuses on the problems of protecting all of the states of data in cyberspace so data has three possible states one is data at rest or in storage and the second one is data in transit and third one is data in process so the protection of cyberspace requires cyber security professionals to account <clears throat> for the safeguarding of data in all three states to make these three states for safeguarding the data so that uh, the cyber security safeguard that comes into the picture part so what is there in safeguard the third dimension this third dimension of your cyber cube uh, that cyber security cube defines the skills and discipline a cyber security professional can call upon to protect cyberspace so cyber security professionals must use a range of different skills and disciplines available to them when protecting the data in the cyberspace they must do this while remaining on the right side of the law so the cyber security cube defines the three types of skills and disciplines used to provide protection the first skill includes the technologies technologies second skill uh, you know includes uh, the the policies and practice and uh, the third one includes the people to uh, train or educate the people so i said the first skill includes the technologies devices and products available to protect information systems and fend off cyber criminals cyber security prof professionals have a reputation for mastering the technological tools at their disposal however the mukumbar reminds them that the technological tools are not enough to defeat cyber criminals so cyber security professionals must also built a strong defense by establishing policies procedures and guidelines that enable the users of cyberspace to stay safe and follow good practice and finally <clears throat> users of cyberspace must strive to become more knowledgeable about the threats of the cyberspace and establish a culture of learning and awareness so that includes the people so these uh, you know gives the uh, you know the cyber security safeguards one is technologies policies and practice and your people so these are you know three dimensions of your cyber security cube one is principle of security <clears throat> second one is information state and third one is the countermeasures are the safeguards so let us see one by one in the what are the basic principles of uh, uh, you know uh, the confidentiality principle of your integrity principle of your availability so the principle of your confidentiality in cia triad the principle of your confidentiality that uh, defines as the confidentiality prevents the disclosure of information to unauthorized people so that is you know it is closed one right so that is uh, i mean the uh, it prevents this disclosure of information to unauthorized people resources and processes so another term of for confidentiality is privacy privacy organizations restrict access to ensure that only authorized operators can use data or other network resources for example a programmer should not have access to the personal information of all employees personal information of your all employees <clears throat> so the organizations need to train employees about best practice in safeguarding sensitive information to protect 
themselves and the organizations from attacks. So methods used to ensure confidentiality include data encryption, authentication, and access control. <coughs> so these three are the, the major one. One is the data encryption, authentication, and the access control. So this is the basic principle of the confidentiality. <coughs> then second one is in this confidentiality, you find how you are going to protecting the data privacy then. As we said, sometimes confidentiality uh, is interchanged with the term the privacy, but how the how you are going to protecting the data. So that protecting data privacy is the organizations collect a large amount of data. Much of this data is not sensitive because it is because it is uh, uh, publicly available because the data is publicly available like the names and telephone numbers other data collected though is sensitive so the sensitive information is data protected from unauthorized access to safeguard an individual or an organization so that is the private one sensitive data so there are three types of sensitive information that we can find there are three types of sensitive information uh, that you can find one is the the examples of that sensitive data that you find that uh, one is the personal information so personal information is uh, 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 is personally identifiable information we call that as your uh, you know the p i i personally uh, identifiable information that traces back to an individual so in this figure you can see this category of data that they like social security number or medical records credit card numbers or financial records so protecting this data confidentially so another sensitive information another type of your sensitive information which is the private uh, information that is the types of sensitive business information so the business information is information that includes anything that poses a risk to the organization if discovered by the public or a competitor so in this figure you can see the category of data that the trade secrets or the acquisition plans financial data or customer information and the another class of <coughs> data or another type of your sensitive data that uh, you know we can classify that the, the classified information are classified based on the sensitivity so this classified information is information belonging to a government body classified by its level of sensitivity so in this figure list this category of data that top secrets secret confidential and restricted data right so these are uh, you know some some different kind of information that you can find the classified based data three types of data that you find here right so the next one is in the con in the cia triode the principle of confidentiality which includes the controlling access which includes the controlling access so what happens in controlling access the access control defines a number of protection schemes that prevent unauthorized access to a computer network database or other data resources so the co concept of triple a a a a the concept of triple a involve three security services one the first service is your authentication second one is authorization and third one is accounting third one is accounting so these services <laughs> provide the primary framework to control accesses 
the, provide the uh, control the access. The first one is your authentication. So if you see this authentication in the diagram here, the authentication, the authentication verifies the identity of a user to prevent unauthorized access. Users prove their identity with a username or ID. So in addition, users need to verify their identity by providing one of the following as shown in this figure. Something, uh, you know, you know. That is the first one, such as a password. Second one is something you have, such as a token or a card. And third one is something you are, that is such as your fingerprints, such as your fingerprints. So it requires all users to identify themselves. So for example, if you go to an ATM for cash, you need your bank card something you have that we call you know something you have and you need to know the pin of that bank card so this is also an example of multi-factor authentication multi-factor authentication requires more than one type of authentication the most popular form of authentication is the use of your passwords use of your passwords so the second A of your triple A is authorization. The second A is the authorization. So in this authorization, it de defines that the authorization service determines which resources users can access along with the operations that uh, users can perform so as shown in this figure, you can see that some systems accomplish this by using an access control list or an ACL. We call that access control list or ACL, access, uh, ACL. So this an ACL determines whether a user has certain access privilege once the user authenticates. So for example, here user John's uh, authenticates by using their you know the uh, user identity then user john request the access to the file zero then for this user john whether the access uh, control is given or not that is the authorization we say here so just because you can log on to the corporate network does not mean that you have permission to use the high speed color printer or like you know any file like this so authorization can also control when a user has access to a specific resources like you know file zero. So for to access this file zero in this example, the user is John and belongs to a group admin that is approved so that the, the authorization is given that the John can read the file, write the file and execute the file that is access granted. So these are the you know belonging to the admin group that user john and going to check whether which you know the the uh, access control is given so read write and execute access control is given right so for example employees may have access to a sales database during work hours but the system locks them out after the hour so this is the second a of your uh, you know triple a service the next one is uh, the third A is accounting. We say the accounting. So accounting keeps track of what users do. So including what they access, the amount of time they access resources and any changes made. So for example, a bank keeps track of each customer account. So an account uh, in that account, an audit of that system can reveal the time and amount of all transactions and the employee or system that executed the transactions. Cybersecurity accounting service work the same way. So that system tracks each data transaction and provides auditing results. An administrator can set up computer policies 
as shown in this you know the example here so in the computer configuration in local computer policies the computer configuration going to the windows operating system and in that going to the security settings in the security setting going to the local policies in the local policies it is going to send the security options in the security options so what the policies are setting the audit is the access of your global system objects is disabled here the security setting here okay so this uh, you know um, uh, as a result means as an administrator can set up the computer policies to enable system auditing only the the administrator can enable this now it is currently disabled so the concept of Uh, you know the uh, triple a a and your a triple a is similar to using a credit card system so how it is going to you know using a credit card system let us see that using this credit card system first it goes to the authentication that who are you so in the authentication and in this uh, so here the name will be uh, written on this particular card second one is authorization so how much you can spend that is authorization that limit will be there so the credit card defines who can use it how much that user can spend and accounts for items or services the user purchase that is the accounting what are the different items are purchased using that uh, you know the credit card so cyber security accounting to maintain this confidential information accounting cyber security accounting tracks and monitors in real time so websites like uh, you know uh, uh, you may heard about this nors websites like nors uh, show attacks in real time based uh, on data collected as part of an accounting or tracking system okay so you can go to this the the nors uh, to visit this no uh, i mean you can go to this nors to check it out you know what are the different uh, the attacks uh, the cyber attacks the maps for the visualization and the digital threat incidents so the top 15 live cyber attack maps for visualization and the incidents are given so that is your you know distributed denial of service and how does the distributed denial of service attack works and how can you combat the ddos attacks so it gives you know the the all the information all the the information you can go through that link okay so this is the confidentiality so in the confidentiality we have find out you know different different services then we'll try to discuss the uh the some of the laws which are uh, associated with this confidentiality so some of the uh, i mean the laws and liabilities which are given that confidentiality and privacy your confidentiality and privacy Uh, seems interchangeable but from a legal standpoint they mean different things most privacy data is confidential but not all confidential data is private access to confidential information occurs after confirming proper authorization so financial institutions hospitals medical professionals law firms and businesses handle confidential information confidential information has a non public status maintaining confidentiality is more of an ethical duty right whereas privacy is uh, you know appropriate use of data when organizations collect information provided by customers or employees they should only use that data for its intended purpose only their intended purpose only 
most organizations will require the customer or employee to sign a release form giving the organization permission to use the data use the data so all of the laws listed uh, in this figure you can see the privacy act of 1974 and the freedom of information act employ sorry family education records and privacy act or uh, the computer fraud and abuse so all of these listed laws uh, uh, include a provision for dealing with privacy starting with uh, the uh, you know us laws so as well as in this you know the second uh, figure it lists a sampling of international efforts most of these laws are responsible to the massive growth in data collection like the personal information protection and electronic document act of your canada for china having the computer uh, process the personal information protection act so these are some of the uh, the international uh, efforts uh, right so the growing number of privacy related status create a tremendous burden on organizations that collect and analyze data so policies are the best way for an organization to comply with the growing number of privacy related laws policies enable organizations to enforce specific rules procedures and processes when collecting storing and sharing the information sharing the information so these are some laws and liability so th this is related to your confidentiality this is related to the confidentiality the first basic principle of your cia tria now let us see the second you know uh, principle of security that is integrity so the principle of your data integrity it says that so integrity is the accuracy integrity is the accuracy consistency and the trustworthiness of data during its entire life cycle so another term for integrity is your quality that is data quality uh, right so the data undergoes a number of operations such as capture storage retrieval update and transfer so data must remain unaltered during all of these operations by unauthorized users so the methods used to ensure data integrity include uh, the hashing the hashing it includes the just a second yeah hashing and then the data validating or data validity checks and data consistency uh, checks and the access control the access control list so data integrity systems can include one or more of the methods as listed uh, here as you know uh, 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 it can capture storage uh, retrieval update and transfer so these are you know the, the basic principles of uh, your uh, confidentiality i mean the data integrity so it includes the hashing data validity checks your data consistent checks and access controls so let us see <coughs> the uh, the need for data integrity what is the need of your data integrity so the need of need for your data integrity is a fundamental component of information security the need for data integrity varies based on how an organization <coughs> uses data for example facebook does not verify the data that a user posts in a profile 
a bank or financial organizations assigns a higher importance to data integrity than facebook does so transactions and customers accounts must be accurate so in a healthcare organization data integrity might be a matter of life or death so prescription information must be accurate so the need for data integrity is having uh, the different level that is low level mid level high level and critical level so at low level that is that blogs or the personal posting sites includes in this low level that is the data may not be verified here in blogs or you know in posting sites like in facebook and low level of trust in content the examples for your low level that includes the public opinion and open uh, you know the contribution similarly the mid level uh, data integrity that is online sales and search engines so this online sales and search engines includes uh, the mid level data integrity that is the little verification is permitted data not completely trustworthy but data is collected with publicly posted forms so similarly the high level uh, you know data integrity so in this high level data integrity uh, such as your e-commerce and analytics so this e-commerce and analytics includes all data is validated data is checked to provide trustworthiness so the examples for this high level uh, data integrity that includes the organizations databases and finally there is a critical level uh, data integrity that needs that is your healthcare and the emergency services which includes like you no know, all data validated and tested and data is verified to provide the trustworthiness so this protecting the data integrity uh, is a constant challenge for most organizations so loss of data integrity can render entire data resources unavailable or unusable so this is the the second part of your uh, need for data integrity uh, that is the principle of that and we also check that in the data integrity it needs to check the integrity checks because as the data is flows whether uh, the data is altered or not that to check that one it requires the integrity check so an integrity check uh, Uh, is that checksum process so an integrity check is a way to measure the consistency of collection of data that is a file or a picture or a record it may be anything it may be a picture or it may be a file or it may be any record so that is type of your data tested right okay so the integrity check performs a process called the hash function it undergoes through a hash function that generates a digest okay the hash so the the uh, integrity check performs a process called a hash function to uh, take a snapshot of data at an instance in time so the integrity check uses the snapshot to ensure data remains unchanged that remains unchanged so the checksum is one example of your hash function so a checksum verifies the integrity of file or string of characters before and after they transfer from one device say suppose host 1 to your host 2 one device to another device okay uh, um so they they must check one device to another uh, device across a local network or the internet so checksums simply 
convert each piece of information to a value and sum the total so to test the data integrity a receiving system just repeats the process if the two sums are equal suppose if both the sums are equal if these two sums are equal the check sums are equal uh, uh, then the data is valid we say that the data integrity is pass that is valid if they are not equal suppose if if these are not equal suppose the the check sum which is computed at sender side and check sum which is computed at receiver side if they are not equal then it is invalid that means the data is malpractice means you know altered the data is altered so that is integrity check so common hash functions here uh, you know to make this hash value the common hash functions uh, which are used uh, to convert any plain text into your hash value is one is your md5 algorithms or your sh a the secure hash algorithm one or your s h a secure hash algorithm of digest size is 256 bits or s h a secure hash function algorithm of your 512 that means the hash value this binary value size is 512 bits so these hash functions use complex mathematical algorithms the hashed value is simply there for comparisons for example <clears throat> after downloading a file the user can verify the integrity of the file by comparing the hash values from the source with the one generated by the hash calculator so organizations use version control to prevent accidental changes by on uh, authorized users two users cannot update the same object objects can be file database record database records or transactions for example the first user to open a document has the permission to change the document the second person has a read only version so that depends so accurate backup the accurate backups helps to maintain data integrity if data becomes corrupted so an organization needs to verify its backup process to ensure the integrity of backup before data loss occurs so authorization determines who has access to an organization's resources based on their need to know so for example file for permissions and user access the file permissions and the uh, i mean the user access control ensures that only certain users can modify data an administrator can set permissions for a file to read only as a result a user accessing that file cannot make any changes so that way uh, the the uh, uh, data integrity checks can be takes place so this is the next field of the next field of our next uh, principle of your security is availability <coughs> availability so data availability is the principle used to describe the need to maintain availability of information systems and services at all times cyber attacks and system failure can prevent access to information systems and services so the availability of information systems and services you know uh, the, the for example the uh, interrupting the availability of the website of a competitor by bringing it down may provide an advantage to its rival so that is 
the this denial of services this denial of uh, services attack threaten system availability and prevent legitimate users from accessing and using information systems when needed so another one is the malicious attacks and the natural disasters or the equipment failures are there so the methods used to ensure availability include system redundancy system backups increased system uh, resilience equipment uh, maintenance up to date operations and software and plan in place to recover quickly from the unforced disasters right so in this as we just mentioned uh, the the methods to use to ensure this availability that includes the redundancy system backups increased system resiliencies and so on so in this availability there are five nines are there there are five nines are there so people use various information systems in their day to day lives so computers and information systems control communications transportations and the manufacturing of products the continuous availability of information system uh, the, the 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 continuous availability of uh, the information systems is uh, imperative to modern life the term high availability here the term which we are using the high availability uh, uh, that describes the systems designed to avoid downtime so high availability ensures a level of performance for a higher than normal period so this high availability systems typically includes three design principles so what are those three design principles that you find one is the eliminate uh, the single point of failure second one is provide a reliable crossover and third one is detect failure as they occur detect failure as they occur so the goal is the ability to continue to operate under extreme conditions such as during an attack so one of the most popular high availability practice is your five nines so that five nines we write 99% 999 nine, 99.999% nine, so five nines so this means that downtime is less than 5.26 minutes per year so uh, here you can see uh, in the, in the in this downtime let us see this first you know what is the first design principle <clears throat> there are a high availability systems uh, that includes the design principle first one is as we are saying that eliminate single point of failure means what identify all devices and <clears throat> the components in a system that would result in a system failure if that device or component falls sorry fails so the methods to eliminate a single point of failure include the hot stand by the devices that redundant components so what is the second type then the second type that provide for the uh, reliable crossover right so that reliable crossover means the redundant power supplies our backup power systems and backup communication systems all provide for reliable crossovers the third design principle is detect the failure as they occur so that means the active device and system monitoring system monitoring detects many type of events including system and device failures so this gives this 99.999% that we call the five nines five nines design principle of your availability design principle of your availability 
right so in this if you see the design principle as we just discussed that you find this five nines as nine 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 the first one is your standardization so standardization system that system standardization provide for systems that use the same components another one is shared component systems and third one is clustering so the goal of this uh, five nines is less than 5.26 minutes per year if the system goes down that's the meaning of this right so then the to ensuring the availability to ensure the availability it is having the the equipment maintenance so organizations can ensure availability by implementing uh, you know uh, some of the uh, methods we call the equipment maintenance is one the equipment maintenance first one so in this equipment maintenance the regular equipment maintenance can dramatically improve system uptime and maintenance include component replacement cleaning and alignment that you can see in this so this ensuring this availability so these are you know few uh, things which are uh, implementing the availability of any organization that can ensure this availability to implement second one is os updates so this os updates that means modern operating systems uh, uh, systems applications and software programs are continuously updated to correct errors and eliminate vulnerabilities all systems applications and software should be updated on a regular schedule so cyber security professionals can subscribe to alert the announce new update release and the third one is you find the backup system the backup system so in this backup system what it says every organization ensures that the backup of organization data configuration data and personal data ensures system availability backup system should also be tested to ensure these systems work properly and that data can be recovered in the event of your data loss so that gives your uh, uh, the uh, test backups and the, the third one next one is plan for disasters so in the plan for uh, disasters that disasters planning is a critical part of increasing system availability so employees and customers should know how to respond to a disaster the cyber security team should practice response and test backup systems and be familiar with the procedures for restoring the critical systems restoring the critical system so the next one is the implementing or implement technologies to implement technologies uh, uh, to make uh, the availability of this the high availability requires continuous evaluation and testing new technologies to counter new threats and attacks so cyber criminals use the latest tools and tricks cyber professionals are also required to use new technologies products and devices right so that you can see and next one is your monitor systems in the monitor systems it is a continuous system monitoring increase system availability so monitoring event logs system alerts and access logs provide the cyber security professionals with the real time system information so this information can identify attacks after the event occurs and enable the cyber security professionals to fend off attacks as they occur and the next one is your system testing one 
so in the in the in the, in the system testing one uh, that ensuring the availability in such a way that all system should be tested to find vulnerabilities first so testing can include your port scans vulnerability scans and penetration tests penetration tests so these are you know the, the any organization can ensure the availability by implementing this equipment maintenance I have OS updates, backup systems, plan for disaster, implement uh, technologies, monitor systems, and your penetration testing or system testing. We see. So this is the uh, the availability of your third principle. This is the availability of your third principle. So I'd like to stop the session here.